Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got space weather and a medium range outlook. New release from the James Webb Space Telescope at the Red Spider. We'll see a lesser known ocean circulation pattern and what drives it, and get more on last year's major solar storm. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, where we find that the continued quiet streak is holding. The sunspots facing Earth have very little juice and are fairly stable. Coronal hole is turning through, but we do have two notes amidst the Earth-facing solar quiet. Top left, coronal ripple is another far side eruption from the same sunspot group. There have been about five or six major CME production events from that sunspot as it turns across the far side. It is coming back around early next week. We also have one fewer plasma filament eruption threat destabilization moved into a shift and collapse of the suspended plasma. A couple others remain. We've also been expecting a coronal hole stream in the solar wind, and while we've got it, as plasma speed in purple is on the rise, it is a weak stream overall barely above 500 kilometers per second, so geomagnetic conditions have not reached storm levels. Top quake of the last day, 6.4 in the band of sea, several quakes nearby there lately, this one a blood echo at the LVZ, bottom side of the crust. Folks, this is the Red Spider, NGC 6537. It's been a cool feature in space they like to promo around Halloween each year, but this year, James Webb gave it a costume. Wow. The tendrils, the high detail edges of the plasma and dust and gas forms. Holy cow, our eyes on the sky are literally 10 times better than when this channel was started. Excellent topic here, terrible analysis. This paper is tracking the Atlantic Nino decadal variability. Many people don't even know there is an Atlantic version of the Nino. Their explanation here it's not only unconvincing, but it doesn't match the data. However, as has been reported a few times in the literature before, the negative troughs of the Atlantic Nino oscillation match sunspot maximums pretty perfectly, and you can actually see that in their own long-term data chart if you know when the maxima occurred. Last but not least, we're going to have to dive deeper on this one soon, but they looked at the major solar storm impacts from the May 2024 event, and it was the largest disruption of its kind since 1978, which means that the moderate solar eruptions triggered a bigger storm condition on Earth than the 1989, 2003, and 2017 solar storms, which seems wrong. Until you account for the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, not that most of you need convincing if you find yourself here watching this show, but if you happen to be new here, this keeps happening. Medium events from the sun acting like major ones because we are in the middle of a magnetic pole shift. Subscribe. We do this every day. Folks, tickets to our winter tour are going quickly. First one is only a month away in Omaha, Nebraska. Tickets are available below. It is a four-hour masterclass on surviving the coming disaster event on Earth, this magnetic pole shift, dealing with the radiation surge and the weather changes and how the planet might change in an even more dramatic way. Five cities in five months, and this is what it's all about. Get your tickets at the link below. We only have a few events left this year at Observer Ranch. Self-offense training November 1st after the Halloween event. Observer speed dating 2.0 the 7th and the 8th. Come find your prepper princess or post-apocalyptic warlord. The film premiere and last pole shift conference of the year is middle of the month. Come out for the end of our rookie season. ObserverRanch.com Tickets to the tour are below as well and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 3 45 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone